waiting for some stuff to come back, but this is a uh, food cart electrical build-in. I'm not doing a heck of a lot else on this particular build. This is uh, owned by some subway employees, actually. And uh, so what I'm doing is setting this up with uh, surface mount, because this is in a truck that's going to be somewhat mobile. And a lot of sharp stuff on the inside of the wall, so we, we really don't want to go through the trouble putting this behind the wall. The other thing we don't want to do is frame out just to conceal wires, okay? So, there are people that will do this with conventional Romex wire. I kind of prefer the armored cable on it, and it's it's not just so that it looks like the inside of a military vehicle or something. It's, it's, uh, it's strong, it's flexible, you can take it back apart, you can undo these things and modify them. Uh, get basically got one breaker and one outlet on most on vast majority of this. The only time it's one breaker like controlling two things is when there's a switch and there's basically two circuits doing that. Uh, e e one circuit controls the interior lighting, one controls the exterior lighting, the interior lighting right here. So we flip this and what that's going to do is that feeds up to this so that whatever we have on the ceiling can plug into that and a non-electrician can put a ceiling light in because it's a plug-in they don't have to hardwire it or they could take that apart and make it a hard wire if they wanted to but that that gives us the option of a non-electrician just doing something where they plug it in uh, here you know a lot of things are bundled in it's just screwed onto the surface because they're probably going to unscrew these to put a panel up here just to close all that stuff off but that's that's not going to be happening right away this wiring was original 12 volt stuff from the vehicle and so that's that's not really my thing i just kind of put that up to get it out of the way but again these little brackets have got to come down so they can put another thing up there or that's going to be cabinetry and it'll be inside the cabinetry so I, we don't know yet uh, down here what you'll notice is that these are all mounted lower that's because these are the appliance plugs and we'd expect them to be out of the way on the service side, now this is the side where a couple of these windows are going to get removed and that will be on the service side. That's where you deal with the customers, right? Pull up to the curb, the driver's over here, the curb's over there. You'll open the thing, you start serving stuff. Okay, this is where you're going to have like your cash register or your, your iPad with a Square app or PayPal app. And, and you're going to have, a, you know, your phone plugged in. Stuff that's above the counter that's electrical. And that's why I mounted those high. They're, they're all mounted high. Uh, over here, this is where your cooking appliances are. That's why those are mounted low. We want that out of the way. We, we don't want the plugs being up where the heating elements and stuff is. Uh, over here is our 220 circuit. I, I put a junction box here and a junction box at the end. Now, there's two reasons for doing that. Actually, three or four reasons for doing that. One, we, we don't know where the appliance is going to end up. I mean, we, they, they haven't fully figured out what the interior layout is going to be. So we want to have some options for that. Those gray plugs are expensive because they're 20 amp. And those are one plug, one, one breaker, over one, one fuse over the panel. But the thing is, by taking our 220 and running through two boxes like that, where normally 220 is, is one 220 outlet equals you know one, one of those paired breakers, is I could break this up. I could... I could take out that paired breaker, I'm just taking out the breaker, swap the wire over to two single 20 amp breakers, run those over to here, and then what those would become is a, a 20 amp single just like those are. Okay, so this allows us the ability, if we put in 220 first with, with two junction boxes in, in, in the run, that allows us the ability to convert that at a later date to 20 amp single runs, okay? And, and that, that matters once they've decided on what kind of kitchen equipment they're going to buy. That gives us more versatility and, on, you know, and, and this is all pretty standard stuff. We've got the one, one main circuit for the interior lighting, one for the exterior lighting, which right now it's just running that bare cable. That's how it's going to go. Uh, the whole thing feeds through in a, uh, a, a basically a giant extension cord. It's thicker and heavier duty and runs full 250 power, uh, which an RV plug-in won't do. But if I'm ever doing a tumbleweed tiny house, this is also the way I want to set those up. So if anybody in Portland, Oregon wants to wire up a tumbleweed tiny house or a food cart trailer, 
wants to see what I do, I'm going to use this video kind of as a reference for that. All right, so I'll test it all good. I got to go and deal with some other stuff. So cleaning up basically the way the light switches work. And as a record for the people this is going to go to. Everything that's kind of heavy duty is on this side because that's where the appliances go. Everything that's lighter duty, like the 15s, is going to be on this side. And again, I went one breaker, one box because, you know, we got room in a panel anyway. And then a neat little way to encode these things, so like you get an upper and lower on one of these, is upper will be a light, lower will be a plug, because lights are always above plugs. That's, that's kind of like the, the way of remembering it. Lights are above plugs. The little uppers are for lights, the little lowers are for plugs. Even like that one right there is running actually the two mini circuits. Um, the upper is the one that's running the switch to the this thing because this thing is eventually going to run the outside lighting. The lower runs actually those two plugs plus that that box right there, and that's just so that nothing's nothing's really overloading out of a single thing. And we kind of don't want to use office power strips in these even for the office stuff. We we really want to have an actual hardwired plug in a box for those things. So. Hopefully we'll see more videos in the future of this whole setup.